Let me appreciate the Lord for the grace of being in your midst tonight. And let me also thank him that he has spared every one of us and um, has given us the grace to re-congregate here in his presence for something obvious. And um, I thank you on behalf of my wife, who is supposed to be here, but because of the nature of this program and the timing, uh, she cannot be here. You can be very sure that she is standing by me while we are here. Amen. But um, it's not like you are celebrating something. Stand up, stand up, stand up. I think uh, the moderators, including the host reverend minister, who made brief comments to this uh, effect, they selected the word excitement. They selected it. And that word can be plotted adequately on the graph of what we are doing here tonight, you are talking about a church that has struck 40 years. Christmas last year in my community, usually at the summary of the year, we come together, all churches, the traditional rulers, everybody which doctors everybody, whether you go to church or not, as long as you are a son of the soil, we come together to thank God. And uh, one of the boys, one of the president founders, very, very young, he stood up and um, said that um, the people of the community do not love God. And I was going to speak uh, when um, he made that comment. He also said that they will pray so that all the wicked people in that community will die within January. I am a trained theologian and um, I can talk about some of this. So when it was time for me to speak, I came out. I asked him, whether he's been coming home for some time. And I discovered he's not been coming home. Two, he's very, very young. I told, I reminded him that this year, Christianity in my community is 100 years old. And for the Christianity to have survived a missed African traditional religion, then there is reason to believe that the practitioners of the African traditional religion who have repented and have at least decided to respect God by coming out en masse for that thanksgiving. Love God. And two, I tried to correct him that, look, if God had been killing people, he himself, myself, nobody will be here. So for God to give all the wicked people in my community just the month of January to die, oh, I told him, no, no, well, you've given yourself assignment. That means you are going to present to them the real gospel of Christ. It is only after you have done that and even then, yeah, there is no justification that God should use killing to make people repent. I have gone that astray to remind you that we are talking of 40 years here. Before I open the Bible, 
you are going to shout. You know celebration. The word halal Yahweh. Hallelujah. You know in English and other tongues. Halal Yahweh. Halal means praise. Yahweh means Jehovah or God. So halal Yahweh means praise God or praise the Lord. And you are going to halal Yahweh now. You know, everybody around this place needs to know that something is going on 40 years. Before I go into what I want to talk about, 40 years. So when I say praise the Lord, you will shout hallelujah. It's the same thing. You will shout that until I ask you to stop. And as you shout, look into the face of Jesus until I ask you to stop. Praise the Lord! And praise the Lord. Halal Yahweh. Halal Yahweh. Halal Yahweh. Halal Yahweh. He is worthy of our praise. The Lord of our spirits. He is worthy of all praise. Halal Yahweh. 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 Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you that we enjoy the privilege to be back here, to congregate here, to observe your presence, to celebrate your greatness, to celebrate your faithfulness, to celebrate your presence. To celebrate your favor, Lord, to celebrate your power. We thank you that we did not deserve this, but you did it for us, free of charge. We are simply gathered here to give you that honor. Lord, we know we cannot thank you enough, but receive our praise tonight. For the glory and honor of your name. Even as you speak to us. Addressing us as individuals. And as Lord a congregation. A corporate entity Lord. That is the summary of our discussion today. And during this period. All glory will come back to your name. Father we bless you. Possess me every way. And use me to speak to your children for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Carry your Bible. And help me. Let's go to Ephesians. Chapter number 5. And um, verse number 15. Okay. Verse number 16. And verse number 17. There's some other person. Look at um, Malachi. Malachi, chapter number 3 and verse number 6. Redeeming the time. 
That is my emphasis in that text. Read, please. That is Ephesians chapter number 5 and uh, precisely verse number 17. Please, on your own, read from verse number 15 down to that verse number 17. Malachi chapter number 3 and verse number 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Amen. I will be oscillating between the points I have dotted together here and the scripture we have read in the process of our discussion. The senior Reverend Minister, Reverend Peter Agiempuye and his able wife, the assistant pastors here present, members of the church board, some of you are good acquaintances of mine, heads of various departments of this local church and members at large of this local assembly, brothers and sisters, gentlemen of the press, I consider it a privilege to be invited to this historic and epochal gathering and um, indeed to be present here to mark with you the 40th anniversary celebration of this local church. I acknowledge this honor with great profundity of the heart in Jesus name I have been assigned specifically to speak on the topic assemblies of God church Ikeja Lagos Past, present, and future. Such a discussion is significant for a number of reasons. And before I go ahead to talk about that, that means I'm already announcing to you that I am not preaching. Neither am I really teaching. But I think I just want to draw attention to some vital information that we need at a time like this, both as individuals and as a corporate organization, an institution. And so, if it were possible at the end of my discussion, I'm going to be brief tonight, very, very brief. I will welcome some questions, but then I want you to listen very well. This kind of topic, looking at this local church in the perspectives of the past, the present, and the future is significant for a number of reasons. Number one, the church as an organization, not just an organism, the church as a body that can be run by theories of management that are products of the human intelligence 
the church as a social institution, like every other social institution, is subject to organizational laws and theories, indeed. And that calls for evaluation. That calls for evaluation. When the moderator was talking, he talked about people who came to Lagos with a waterproof bag. And today, they are landlords and landladies. Then, if such people are good business people, from time to time, at least once a year, they look at their business. They say, how has it been? What did I say I will accomplish? Have I accomplished it? If yes, how did I do that? If no, why did I not do that? And then how do I forge ahead? The church is also a business organization. And so there is call for evaluation. There is reason for us to sit back and, you know, take stock. Where did we start? Where are we? Where are we likely going to end tomorrow? Another reason why this topic is very, very pivotal is that the church founded by the Christ himself, the Lord Jesus, is also a mystical organism. It is a spiritual force. It is a spiritual body directly linked to the almighty God. But today, the church has been so challenged by similar ideological options, mystical organizations, spiritual bodies, influences around the world, that the church has almost lost its true identity, therefore challenging us to rediscover that identity. Carry out what I have called here self-recollection, self-examination or re-examination if you like self-criticism, self-reflection, and above all, self-theologizing. Number three, why this discussion is very, very important, is that the current violence of change around the world is so devastating that there is no human being in the world right now that can stand and resist the change. This change is just like the tsunami that happened to Japan. I'm sure you watched that and you saw that nothing stood before it ordinarily. People ran to the mountains for salvation or for safety. It demolished everything. It is like the tornadoes that hit southern part of America. It is like the earthquake. So, the change that is rocking the world is so powerful that it has affected pastors. It has affected poor people. It has affected church seating arrangement. It has affected church building. It has affected dressing. It has affected theories. It has affected values. It has affected concepts. It has affected ideologies, systems, institutions, methods, everything. Religion, politics, education, economics, technology, everything has been devastated by this change. Unfortunately, or unfortunately, this change has not spared the church around the world. 
The effects of this change are so devastating that we in assemblies of God we are already crying out almost in desperation as I'm standing here right now I can mention several pastors whose children were born in fact pastors who married wedded in assemblies of God God children in assemblies of God dedicated them brought them up but today they have left the assemblies of God. Why? Because of the force of the change. Our youth, <laughs> you have mass exodus. Not to talk of children of deacons and deaconesses and others. I am just talking about, you know, I had prepared, I, I have a ministry along this line. I have a doc, full documentation already. So when I got the invitation, I said, okay, we can just chip in parts of it. They are all in line. It is shaking the church around the world. It is devastating traditional values. It is, it is raising women up and bringing men down. It is shaking everywhere. In fact, we need to do a lot of work to raise our intellectual capacity to a level where we can cope up with the challenges mounted on the church by this devastating change that is rocking the whole world. Please, if you have understood what I have just mentioned briefly, that means that our gathering here during this period of celebration at least has two phases. Number one, it is a time to evaluate the past. It is a time also to prepare for the future. So you have celebration. But what we are doing, if you really understand what you are doing as an institution, it is far beyond celebration. Celebration itself is foundational to the real thing that is rocking the mind of God. And that is preparation for the future because the church around the world is losing out. I am speaking both as a pastor and as a scholar. As I'm standing here right now, you know, some few years ago, we were talking about our Pentecostal distinctives. <laughs> it is becoming mere history. Quote me anywhere. Our Pentecostal distinctives. When I talked with the professors, our men from the West, and uh, I feel their pause and know what is going on there. I tell them, we in Africa, we are the level at which we are practicing religion is so shallow that some of these things are not really worrying us for now. But certainly, they are going to disturb us. The church is gravitating seriously toward secular humanism and losing out a lot of grounds as per those distinctives, those supernatural futures that mark out the church founded by Jesus the Christ. And um, I'll be talking along that line probably by tomorrow because of time. But uh, I want you to listen very, very well and uh, understand that what we are doing is like looking at the past. Judging the past by the standard of the present and using the whatever outcome of that judgment to prepare for the future. That's what we are talking about. So it's actually past, present, future, but I'm going to speak only two times. So I'll be talking generally past, present, as I'm already doing, and then tomorrow again, present, future. So the present is shared between the past and the future, because I have only two times to speak. Tonight and tomorrow night. 
But before then, I got some of the information that you um, installed in your website. And I discovered that this church has done a lot. When the moderator was speaking, he made a comment which um, is very much in line. The moment you say, Assemblies of God, Nigeria, it just brings up with a lot of uniqueness. Join your hands together for yourself. Are you not hearing the English? <laughs> You know, I'm not telling the story of David and Goliath now. What we are saying is that this church surfaces when you stand at the national level and then you are looking at, assembly, at Assemblies of God Nigeria. He even said, if you count one, two, three, four, five, this one must come in. Yeah, I don't know why you did not say one. Uh, because I don't know what criteria you used. Yeah, probably you are thinking in terms of uh, history. But I know in my research that Christianity came to Lagos. In fact, Christianity came to Nigeria. And um, in the 1840s, yeah, 1840s from Lagos, from Calabar, and uh, but the churches before then, the Roman Catholic Church had made some attempt to plant Christianity in Nigeria in the 15th century, but because of some political factors and cultural factors, they could that that the, the church they planted then did not survive. The Oba of Benin monopolized the Christian education that was introduced by the missionaries. So he wanted to be his children alone to be educated. And uh, plus other cultural problems, you know, the same thing happened with the Muslims. Aha. Uh -huh. The, the Malam or whoever they wanted only his palace to be educated. And that raised a lot of doubt. So along the line, that ministry did not survive. As far back as the era of exploration, the Roman Catholic Church made that attempt. But then, why they folded up by the 1840s, um, the Presbyterian Church came from Calabar, and the Methodist Church came from Lagos here, and that was the 1840s. And uh, you know that Assemblies of God came up in Nigeria in the early 1930s. That means that Christianity had already survived up to close to 100 years, historically speaking, before Pentecostalism of the Assemblies of God version was planted. And uh, that will tell you that our founding fathers who could read, who could write, who could communicate, they were not stuck illiterate judged by the standard of their time. Then, I discovered that um, Christianity shifted, Assemblies of God Christianity shifted to this side. During the 50s, and uh, precisely, your church was planted in 1971. That means that Christianity had already been here for close to 129 years before Ikeja Assembly was born. And today, this local assembly is 40 years. And I discovered that those who started were just one, three, 13 people. And today, what is going on? Ah, you should be more than 2,000 children included. And if we bring those who have left this church to start another, yeah, you need to be given some credit. Stand up and share time with somebody and say, we are moving forward. We are moving forward. Amen. 
Next thing, a lot has happened. People have been transferred. People have died. A lot has taken place. And yet, this local church is one thing strong. For security reasons, I cannot tell you how many millions or billions you have rolled out. If I mention it here, the reverend cannot give me that because of, for security reasons. But I could press button and get it. In fact, it is very simple. But if I tell you how many millions ha, has rolled out from this place, you will become angry. Not annoyed, though. You will become angry. You become angry. If care is not taken, you will fold your seat and leave this place. If I tell you how many, how much has rolled into this place and how much has left to unknown destination in port and how much is left as remainder or balance. In fact, the church board will hold meeting after this lecture. They will hold meeting and say, what are we doing? I wish, if this thing is true, because when that moderator was talking, he made reference to Assemblies of God, Ikeja, coming at least within the range of the first five. You know what put you there? Not because you are dressing final. What put you there is how much came in and how much traveled. Look at somebody and say, we will make it happen. Look at somebody and say, we will make it happen. Listen, um, I'm a thinker. Don't be offended. Though. When I finish, I will correct some of you. But listen, one of the problems we have is traditionalism. Yeah, the same way, the same way. And nobody sees back to challenge some of these practices. For instance, do you know that there is no reason why there should be even one unemployed person in this place. There is no reason for that. If you have anybody, whether you for a man or woman, unemployed, there is no reason for it. If I go by the data I have gathered concerning you, there is no reason why I think I even have medicine. I will share that medicine with Reverend. Every YS, the so-called YS, and I think uh, they should be called uh, senior single ladies. Because this YS from America, the thing is working. I'm a psychologist, not professional anyway. The thing is, work, is counterproductive. It's working against the people who bear the title. And I have not less than 30 points that if we adhere to every YS, will necessarily marry. I'm sure your mind is rioting now. We'll talk about that one later. As I look through your past and present, I have discovered that you are true assemblies of God, Nigeria. And not only that, you have a lot of predilection for African style. The man who led the songs even shows some little example. That song came from an unbeliever. Eh? What do you call him? This Hebrew man. He is late now a musician. But the voice, the melody, the psychology was given by God. So the church has gleaned that psychology, that melody, and recontextualized it. Instead of throwing it away because you can't throw your nature away, you can't. So for you to recognize African values, I salute you. I am, a, I am an African scholar. I salute you very seriously. I have 
have also discovered that you do a lot of worship. In fact, you have all the departments of the general council and the district represented. But where I have some little problem, good one, two areas. Before I come back to that one. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Come Holy Spirit and feed the house of the faithful. Send forth your spirit and they shall create a so, let us pray, O oh God, of our light of the I want to salute you because of the role you play in educating the youth. This is what has impressed me most. The way you handle the youth, I am so impressed because that is my area of specialization in what I have called church technology or environment technology and values and I know what is going on the worst hit population category in terms of the devastation done by the change we are talking about is the youth And so, the way you handle the youth here is very, very commendable. But then, probably, you need to know that women are claiming around the world that uh, they are equal with men. So I didn't see any dickness in the chalkboard. board. You better begin to prepare yourself. And some are challenging. In Assemblies of God, women are more than 70% in Nigeria. So why should you have the, uh, the apex policy making body and no woman is represented? That's injustice. That's what they are crying to Nigerian government and they are giving seats. Anyway, that one should be left for me. You know, the world is fighting against male domination. And scholars, including theologians, everybody is talking about, and even Assemblies of God, we vote, we train women, we ordain them, all of that, and we are still struggling between <laughs> equality and inequality. Eh? So it better be, I will come back to that to really explain exactly what I mean. But as I look at your values, I discover that this is somebody will say superb biblical focus church world missions, prayer, service family, excellence people, relationships innovation, teamwork feedback, informality and humor and optimism uh, uh, the, this, is, this is excellent this is standard and before I go on to commend you challenge you what we are doing in a nutshell is like a man doing business and coming to find out am I making profit or am I losing and why from this point and how such questions so you discover that assemblies of God is very well formally and consistently packaged from the beginning but the packaging itself though it has survived the test of time and history and human experience needs to be re-evaluated and that is what you and I are doing now. Because where we were yesterday, that is not where we are today. And 100 years from now, will not be at that same point. For that to happen, and for us to know where we are, and know the direction we must move toward, you have to look at the entire structure of what I have called here philosophy or policy. 
you can retitle it Assemblies of God is a spiritual organization is a religious organization and it is a Pentecostal organization that means that when you ask us what is your view of reality we say our view of reality is that the ultimate reality is spirit and that is God why this is important is the title God is already suffering from America they are reducing the meaning of God rapidly and Africa is being very rapidly Americanized, Europeanized Westernized so that where we are today 50 years from now 100 years from now the power of change that is rocking the world will likely hit us off if we do not walk with that kind of power in focus. We must remind ourselves that we believe in the supernatural. The church started by people who could raise the dead, heal the blind, speak in tongues, perform miracles. That was how the church started. So we have to ask, are we still there today? Do we still value genuine speaking of tongues? And if yes, what category of people speak in tongues? Is this small, small girls and children or mostly women and young people? What happened to their dog? What happened to the educated? Between the power of the supernatural and the power of mere intelligence which one is controlling our values, our methods our system let's stand, everybody stand when I looked at your vision statement ha huh. you did well your papal statements they are fine let me summarize from the angle sir sit down just briefly please you will discover that our gathering here is not like ordinary social club. It's not like, yeah, banks also gather. You know, age grade, they gather. Companies gather, you know. Uh, political parties, they gather. There is nothing you do here they don't do. Muslims, I mean. So, why and how is our own gathering different? Why do we say church? What are we talking about? The church is in the world. Let me summarize it in my terms to do at least five things. Number one, to carry out her ministry to God. Number two, to perform her mission to the lost. Number three, to manage the environment. serious. To manage the environment. Whether you are talking about physical environment or social environment, economic the church is in the world to manage her environment. Number four. The church is in the world to mediate the second advent of the great master. The church is the only institution in the world that has been charged by the almighty God with the responsibility of announcing that a time is coming when Jesus the Christ will return to this world now that kind of belief finds expression if it is really believed in every other thing we do if we lose out from there then we lose everything if you look at the history of assemblies of God generally, 
including your past, you will discover that what controlled and propelled their actions, their activities, their psychology, their mind, everything was their, the level at which they expected the second coming of Christ. That was why they practiced holiness to the extreme. That was why some of them dropped their families who did not believe in Christ. That was why some of them were persecuted. That was why some of them did not get cobalt till they died. That was why some of them did not even allow the church to pay them when they answered the call into the ministry. They so believed that Jesus will come back in their time that that belief consumed everything that made them a personality. And I can go ahead to announce to us that one reason why Assemblies of God and your church inclusive has survived over the years in spite of all the hurdles, all the troubles, all the court cases, all the fighting, all the backsliding, all of you know the civil war, everything. One reason is because of the way the foundation was laid around the parousia. Some of you are still here who believe during the seventies you never ended a service without thus says the Lord, I am coming soon. You never slept without asking God to please make you rapturable in case he came in the night. Some of us even were deceived into believing that Christ had come when we woke up very early in the morning and uh, did not know that it was still too it was too early and we went to the church house for morning devotion and they discovered that Nobody was there. And fear gripped us. And we thought Christ had come and gone. And we were left behind. It was as much as that. That kind of expectation is what made the American Assemblies of God to be very strong. And to be distinct from the Orthodox, Evangelical, Conservative, Protestant churches and Roman Catholic. The same thing here. But today there is a shift. The shift is so much that some of us are very, very worried. Because the average Christian today has lost focus of the real meaning of Christianity. In fact, because of background test of poverty, national poverty. Not that Nigeria is poor, but uh, poverty has affected everything we do. Because of that, unemployment and so on, prayer has shifted focus. The word deliverance has gained new meaning. I am talking like a scholar now. The word deliverance has gained new meaning. Salvation has been wrongly repackaged. So, emphasis is on what you get in the now, what in a professional term we will call realized eschatology. That means whatever God prepared to do for us in heaven, let him do it now. Failure to do it now, then there is no God. This kind of shift from the eschatological focus of the parousia has affected even answering the call of God. Young people hardly think of moving where you will preach and win souls. I'm talking generally. It's like that everywhere in Nigeria and Africa. So you see, in the past, somebody answered the call and they want to pay him. He said no. It depends on God. Do you know what it means? Some of them did not build. They did not save Kobo in the bank. And when they died, it was mournful, sorrowful, pitiable. 
one of them while he was retiring he began to ask the people now I'm retiring where do I go into he didn't do it he was busy opening churches here and there why? because of the way he believed Christ was going to come that degree of consciousness but unfortunately the way they suffered as a result of focusing extremely on the second coming of Christ the new generation has reacted so the new generation said I can't suffer what those people suffered and in the process of reacting the new generation has overreacted those people were all about heaven today it is all about this earth so you have two direct extremes the job you and I must do as we go into self-criticism by this anniversary self-re-evaluation self-re-theologizing self-reflection and so on is to modulate to bring together to what extent do we still pay attention heavenward and to what extent do we pay attention to this world if you live only for this world you lose out if you're only talking about heaven you don't want to talk about money and so on the new technologies will hit you off balance so how to modulate how to moderate how to create balance between the two that is the greatest challenge that is facing us and i speak scholarly that it has affected our values tremendously there is call for ag scholars to sit back now and begin to think about it let me give you a very funny example how do we marry between man and woman in male dominated society we tell the girl tell the boy I love you I'll submit okay we tell the boy tell the girl all my words I'll bestow that is fine <laughs> but uh, that can only happen in a capitalist system where the man is the breadwinner and the woman is the homekeeper or whatever you call but today because of gender equality debate and the church is on the positive side men women are raised yeah who should tell the other I bestow my weight upon you what do you say when the woman is working making all the money house everything and the man has come to who should tell the other one upon you I bestow my words. just an example of who should control the other where the man did not attend bible school he's a deacon the wife attended bible school graduated has studied the bible and is ordained who should talk to the other who should teach the other who should sit under the other these are serious challenges i don't want to talk about marriage because the entire system of marriage it has changed see before you marry before you come and see pastor first the girl will just go to the internet hello hello uh, how are you pastor may not even know how to pray computer so everything is changing like that challenging our traditional values so the question becomes what do we maintain and preserve what do we change today if you are not computer literate forget it you know I had an experience which I more repeated is <laughs> we went somewhere they gave us in those days where this credit card card for key just came out so we went there then they do the car like that. All we have known is key, metal key, key. You put it, turn it right or left to open or close. For this one, the white man just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a package, everybody, the elevator, we're up there. 
We put, nothing happened. Many people entered. We stood there with my roommates. So, <laughs> ah, eventually we entered. <laughs> when we entered, where is the soap for bathing? Which everything was as clean as this, this place. So my roommates, okay, we suggested, let us go and tell the white people that they forgot to bring soap here. <laughs> we slept. I took ordinary water. Bath. My roommate said he can't bath without soap. We didn't. So in the morning, he went there again. He was touching something. He saw something like football. He invited me, said, I should come and see something. I said, what is this? We look at it. Oh. We saw something hand soap. Ah, ah. We have never seen what type of soap is metal. In the process of touching it, something came out. Ah. How was the soap? My reverend must be aware. You know Sweke, the retired the general superintendent. They traveled. He told they traveled. So everybody stood. You carry your package with a key, paper. Eh? He stood there reading, trying to read. The white people entered, they were coming out, entering. He stood there until a, a white man came and saw problem, problem. Help you. The man collected the papers. I said, yeah, yeah, that's what, that is, it's your own. It's your own. The man didn't know what he was suffering. The fact, the problem was not that it's not his own. The problem is, what is the connection between paper and door? For us in Africa, uh, if they show you your room, you just say, what of key? You open. But this one, eh? You do it like uh, where you are dialing. The white man said, yeah, it's for you, it's for you. The white man left. So he can say he stood there. Oh. <laughs> Until our own white man, Ennis. Ennis has been going and see the general superintendent of assembly standing. Ennis came and said, ah, okay, please, Johnson, you, you, you're pretty on it. Zweke said when he entered, he sat down. The general superintendent of Assemblies of God, Nigeria, suddenly becoming illiterate. He came back and began to preach the gospel of computer literacy. And I'm telling you, as I'm talking now, no amount of prayer will bring the old generation and the new generation together in assemblies of God. The youth who has been to the university and has been baptized by the trends of the new technologies cannot capital letters cannot, in fact, is completely detached from the world and universe of the parents who may be very spiritual. I went to a church in Lagos. Let me not mention them. AC, every way is so computerized. And I saw the way they were dancing. I know that the technologies are controlling them now. Because we are not used to it. Uh, please, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. It is a serious problem if you are an adult here, no matter your age, and you cannot read, and you cannot write. Put me anywhere, it is a very serious problem. And the problem is compounded if they give you what we used to call quarterly, which is now Sunday school manual, to teach. What are you going to teach? 
it is a serious problem if you have no business with computer, with the internet. Very serious problem. Because of time, I know I have full lectures, especially for the youth, adult, elders, and so on, because what we are suffering today ah, is serious. Young people are shifting. Good shifting, bad shifting at the same time. The old generation have also held tenaciously the values that cannot be defended in the context of the new technologies and the trends and the values they produce. So, our lectures try to bring all these population categories together by raising each to normal standards. Because if that is not done, you are going to see a church, not just a Keja church, you are going to see a church that today is flourishing, but tomorrow, somebody is <laughs> one hand in the pocket. And when you say God, it's okay, God, I believe in God. Ah, God, God, is already happening. Let us pray, Chai, God, God, laughing. Because God has become ordinary thoughts. One sister went the other extreme yesterday, telling me God should be that in those days they were praying in the church or giving offering. And somebody just ran out and started pushing people, beating them, to scattering the offering, commanding them, who asked you to give? You are a sinner. I said, well, madam, if you try that one, it's through later. Or Ikeja. People are giving offering. You come and scatter offering and say that they are sinners. Well, uh, ushers, <laughs> or rear rangers who <laughs> take care of friends will come back tomorrow. But I want us to know that in spite of the good commendations we've given you, I am very, very impressed. As I look at all you put in the internet, as I look around here, okay. In spite of that, there are very, very glaring, serious challenges that are staring us right into the face. That if we do not take cognizance of them today, 50 years from now, when many of us will not be here, <laughs> you are going to have a scientific church. And the church is already going scientific. You are going to have humanistic church. The church is already going humanistic. You are going to have materialistic church. The church is already dancing, gravitating toward materialism, humanism, and everything science offers. So that we are looking for God. Where is God? But glory to God, those scriptures we read, listen very well. In Ephesians, Paul said, Do not be fools. You should be wise, redeeming the time. That means, you should be wise to read the times. Where are we today? How does the times affect us? As a church, Paul said it because the times change. But glory to God that Malachi said, look, everything may change, but I am the Lord, I change not. As long as God does not change, He is reliable. That means He is dependable. That means He can give us the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the intelligence, even the mystical awareness. That means God, as far as He is concerned, holiness is the holiness. Listen, you know, as far as God.
God is concerned, hell is still hell. Heaven is still heaven. Miracles are still miracles. Salvation is real. The Bible remains his word. Jesus, his savior. That means we can we have an objective entity, an objective personality, an objective force. We can always refer to to say this is right or this is wrong. There is no time that Christianity and Islam will become the same thing. There is no time that people will say everybody is a religious founder where well, you are following Jesus, we are following Buddha and so on. Jesus Christ remains outstanding. If you believe him, you don't fear. He who started the church as a spiritual force is still around to maintain the church as a spiritual force. If you believe that, say, Amen! Amen. Raise your two hands. God saw you 40 years ago when only 13 people gathered including children and they were clapping their hands and they were singing God looked ahead and he saw you God raised a structure God raised a system God raised an administration God raised a method that will accommodate you God stood at the beginning God became the process God became the end point of everything the church does that means brother and sister whether you are sick or you are healthy no matter the nature of your problem no matter whatever it is no matter the, the, the rock no matter the power the influence of the technologies once we focus on the reality of God and the fact that he doesn't change we will not be moved Christian cannot do but the spirit can do it tomorrow we will come back and continue from there I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Let come what may the Holy Spirit. I will love thee. Doctor Mrs. Odenekwe, please come and pray. Pray for the church. Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you for the exposition. We thank you because you have spoken to us. We thank you because your word will not fall down in vain. And Father, we thank you because we must redeem the time. It's not by accident that we are hearing it again today, exactly what we heard on Sunday, that we must redeem the time. Father, Lord, we therefore pray that you give us the grace never to fail you. Give us the grace to move along with you. Move, give us the grace to read the handwriting on the wall that will not be taken on our ways. Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you because you still remember us. That's why you are talking to us like this. Father, we therefore pray 
that you continue to bless us. And the vessel you have used, O oh Lord, we pray that you continue to replenish. Replenish and use in a greater dimension. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for everything. Because you are a wonderful God. We bless your name. In Jesus' holy name we have prayed. Amen.